What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're talking all about breathing, specifically some key terminology that will define different breathing patterns and different elements of breathing. Let's dive in. Alrighty, so in this video, like I said, we're talking all about breathing, specifically related to the terminology, because these are the things that kind of sneak up on you in the middle of an exam. Or, or you're looking at a patient and you, you see what you're talking about and then somebody throws a word out and you're like, hmm, what was that word again? So we're going to reinforce terminology related to different breathing patterns in this video. Let's jump in here and look at the first one here. A patient presents to the ED with normal vital signs. You have a respiratory rate of 15 breaths per minute with normal chest excursion. And then the scenario goes on and gives you more information. But what I want you to do is to stop right here and realize that right here, no, normal, normal chest excursion and a respiratory rate of 15 breaths per minute, they just gave you a clue. You see in your mind, you said, okay, 15 breaths per minute, that falls in the normal respiratory rate range, which Egan's defines on page 327 as normal resting adult respiratory rate is 12 to 18 breaths per minute with normal chest excursion. Now, what is chest excursion? Chest excursion is how much the chest wall moves outward during inspiration. If it moves out very small, then that's going to tell us something. Very little chest excursion very ex versus excessive chest excursion tells us something. But this is normal chest excursion. You can tie excursion back to tidal volume. And so right here, we see where this patient seems like they're breathing normal. And so uh, that's what we would, 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 would gather just from this when we think about breathing pattern. Does anything say that there's an abnormal breathing pattern? The answer to that is no. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you two different ways you might see this information. Because what is the term for normal breathing pattern? Well, we could see it presented like this as well. A patient presents to the ED with eupnea. What is eupnea? Eupnea is normal resting breathing. That's what was described in the previous scenario. Now, we also may see it look like this. A eupnic patient presents to the ED. You see where these two scenarios and the previous one we just looked at, they all describe the same thing. A patient presents to the ED breathing normally. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's look at this one right here. A patient presents to the ED and complains of shortness of breath when placed in the supine position. Okay, well, I remember this. First of all, there's information being told here. Shortness of breath, which we all know is dyspnea. But it went on to describe how the shortness of breath presented. And that was when we're placed in the supine position. So what does that tell us? You see, now we're thinking of something very, very specific. This is not normal. Patients should not get short of breath when they're in the supine position. What we know has just been described is something that we might also see presented like this. A patient presents to the ED complaining of orthopnea. What is orthopnea? Orthopnea is dyspnea in the supine position. And we know that this is a clue. This just gave us information. If I'm taking this question, or if I have a patient that presents complaining of shortness of breath in a supine position, now the patient's never going to say, oh, I'm having orthopnea. No, you're the expert. You're the one who's going to look at this and go, wait, when you're sitting up, you're not short of breath. When we lay you down, now you're short of breath. This is orthopnea. And I know that this is highly related to pulmonary edema, specifically with congestive heart failure. There is a redistribution of fluid happening within the alveolar units when we lay this person in the supine position versus when they are sitting up straight. And that's how I use that information. I know where this scenario is already going. I'm probably going to be giving Lasix and starting on CPAP and giving oxygen. Why? Because this patient is presenting with orthopnea and that tells me something about the potential disease process. So be ready to look at those in those different uh, manners. Now, here's another one here. A patient presents to the ED with a respiratory rate of 28 breaths per minute with decreased chest excursion. 
Okay, now let's just think about this. What's the clues here? What is this telling me about my breathing pattern? Well, first of all, they're breathing 28 breaths per minute. So I know that that is elevated. I also see where I have a decreased chest excursion. What's this telling me? This is telling me that this patient is taking very shallow tidal volumes. There's not a lot of movement happening in their chest when they breathe in. This patient is breathing like this. If this is normal, this would be decreased. And I'm breathing fast. Now we think about this before we go show you the next slide. What two words do you think are going to show up on the next slides? Because we see what's happening here right now. All I'm going to do is go same scenario, but I'm going to take the words associated with 28 breaths per minute and the word associated with decreased chest excursion. I'm going to put them in there because when you are having to show competence, you have to be able to recognize the abnormal words, but also be able to know what they mean. This is the definition, the information needed for the next two words you're going to see right here. A patient presents to the ED with tachypnea and hypopnea. You see, we know that tachypnea is the word that defines a respiratory rate greater than 20 breaths per minute. Our patient scenario had us breathing 28 times a minute. We have exceeded that. We are above 20 breaths per minute. That comes straight out of Egan's 12th edition, chapter 16, page 327. Tachypnea is defined as a respiratory rate greater than 20 breaths per minute and has multiple sources. So what's causing this patient to present like this? Multiple things. It could be exertion, fever, hypoxemia, hypercarbia, metabolic acidosis, pulmonary edema, lung fibrosis, anxiety, and maybe pain. But we have a patient who is breathing faster than 20 breaths per minute with very small tidal volumes. So we have to be the experts to know that's what that means. Okay? Let's look at another one here. We'll go the maybe the opposite on this time. Patient presents to the ED with a respiratory rate, again, 28 breaths per minute with an increased chest excursion. So now you say, okay, we've now have an increase in our chest excursion. We're still breathing faster than 20. So we still know right now, if I'm reading this, I'm going, okay, my patient presents with tachypnea. Well, what's that word that goes with increased chest excursion? Somebody who now is not breathing like this, but now like this. Increased chest excursion, which means we're taking larger than normal tidal volumes. Let's see what this looks like. A patient presents to the ED with tachypnea. Why? 28 breaths per minute. And hyperpnea. You see, now we're looking at hyperpnea rather than hypopnea. And that's what this scenario, you would in your head see somebody breathing like this. Very fast and very deep. What does that sound like? Sounds a lot like Kushmal's respirations, right? And that's exactly what we might see when we have somebody presenting with a fast rate and a very deep and large tidal volume. Somebody trying to compensate for a metabolic acidosis. That's the way you can see. You can do the same thing. You say a patient presents to the ED with Kushmal's respiration breathing pattern. Fast, deep, tachypnic, hyperpnic. Respiratory rate of 28 with increased chest wall excursion. All of that says the same thing, and you know that. Let's see another one here. A patient presents to the ED with a respiratory rate of four breaths per minute. What are we thinking here? Four breaths per minute. The patient's now breathing abnormally slow. Now, we know that the word that we're looking for with this one is right here. A patient presents to the ED with bradypnea. Bradypnea. Or you could say uh, a bradypnic patient presents to the ED. Bradypnea, bradypnic, respiratory rate of four. All of that is saying decreased respiratory rate. Again, page 327. Bradypnea is a respiratory rate less than 10 breaths per minute and may occur with traumatic brain injury, 
severe myocardial infarction, hypothermia, and then, of course, you start adding in potential uh, narcotics or recreational drug overdose type situations, and we can get that decreased neural drive to breathe, and our patient presents with a very low or decreased respiratory rate known as bradypnea. A uh, patient presents to the ED with no respirations. What does this tell you? Your patient's not breathing. P patient's not breathing. So what do we know that to be? Well, you know what it's going to be right here, right? An apneic patient presents to the ED. In your mind, you can interchange these because you know you pick up on them. You're sharp. You're, you're, you're smart. And you're, you, when you read these clues, you have to pick up on what they are saying. So this might would also say a patient presents to the ED with apnea. You say, okay, that means that is the cessation of breathing. So we know that we have these points. Now you can have a patient who is apneic or you can have an intermittently apneic patient that we see defined with a lot of our sleep disorders. That is defined by a cessation of air movement or breathing for greater than 10 seconds. So we know that anytime we see that presented in various different ways, we understand what apnea is. Patients not breathing. There's no air movement in and out of the lungs. That's apnea. And we know that. And we know how to recognize them and identify them. And we know how to tie them together. You see, once you get to play in this game where you can write the question, take a question, write it out, and then substitute the words you use, the terminology, for the definition and study it that way. And then when you stand in front of that patient, you'll know exactly that word will come right to your head. You're like, this patient's apneic. This patient's bradypneic. This, oh, that's hyperpnea. Hyperpnea. Wow, that patient's really, really, really deep. And you get that right there. Alrighty, I uh, appreciate you coming here. Before I let you go, I want to remind you about the Respiratory Coach Academy where you can go and find various online courses to help support you along your journey becoming a registered respiratory therapist. Uh, the TMC Bootcamp and the CSC Bootcamp, both of them there to help you pass those attempts on the first try so that you can get those exams out of your way and go be the registered respiratory therapist that you're meant to be. Check the video description below for a link to this webpage right here where you'll also find access to my free resources that are there just to aid you along your journey. And then finally, that's terminology related to breathing patterns and breathing uh, in general. There's way more patterns. We didn't even talk about um, uh, bias respiration and Shane Stokes and, and not in depth about Kushmals. We've got more to talk about, but that's the introduction. Stay here with me right here on YouTube. Hit the like, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I really appreciate that. Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. Send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com if I can ever help you with anything along your journey. And remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.